So at long last, um, <clears throat> after several failed promises and a bunch of time, I'm finally going to introduce the concept of manifolds, um, just briefly, um, at least for the purposes of explaining how tensors show up in physics. <clears throat> so uh, let's just jump right to it. I better share my screen first um, in order to make that happen. Okay. So um, <clears throat> we want um, this idea. Um, so, so I want to define for you the idea of a manifold. Um, okay. And uh, why? Why do we care about this concept of a manifold? Well, we know that calculus is useful in physics, right? It allows us basically to deal with curved lines, right? Um, so that's useful. The world is full of curves. Um, so, you know, the, we, we want to know, well, what's the most general setting we can do calculus, right? We want to apply this amazing tool to as much uh, stuff as possible. Uh, well, we have, um, you know, uh, if you've taken the first, first year course in, in calculus, um, you generally study functions from the real numbers to the real numbers, and you study their integrals and derivatives. Um, hopefully, if you're watching this, it shouldn't, uh, either you've seen this before, it shouldn't be too big of a surprise that there's a very natural generalization uh, where you study maps um, from Rm to Rn. And, um, you know, so these will look something like F will look like uh, you'll have F1 up to Fn, so you'll have n coordinate functions where, where each one of these uh, depends on m um, coordinates. And uh, generally, um, so in, in calculus, so I mean, what are the nicest functions that, that we sort of um, deal with? Well, it's really nice um, if we have a, a power series uh, representation of a function. Uh, these behave a particularly well, especially if it uh, converges to its uh, power series everywhere. And um, in particular, we, we like it if all derivatives of, of a function um, exist. So, so generally, we're, we're interested in what are called smooth um, functions. So, so, you know, we sometimes denote the C infinity of R, and we just mean all those functions that can be differentiated an infinite number of times, polynomials, uh, trig functions, um, you know, functions that converge everywhere to their power series uh, representation. Um, and so, you know, when we do higher dimensional calculus, um, again, we, we can define the, the, you know, the concepts of, of, of derivatives here. Although, of course, now we have to, we have to think about, well, there's directional derivatives, right? There's more than one variable. So we can differentiate by, by any of the input coordinates or any linear combination of those derivatives. Um, uh, we can integrate. And then we also want, uh, we also want these functions uh, to be smooth as well. So, so we say that, that F is smooth um, if, uh, each of, of its uh, component functions are smooth. Okay, so, so um, we care about um, uh, smooth functions. We want to be able to do derivatives and, and integrals. Certainly, we can do this uh, for maps between Rm and Rn. Um, but there's weirder spaces, right? So, so, so certainly, uh, we could have something like a torus, right? We could have some sort of shape like this. And you know this is useful even for very practical physics. You you, you could be talking about like like some sort of uh, electrical coil uh, going around here, and and, and you want to somehow you know understand uh, the magnetic field um, ar around this coil. So it, it would be useful to have a theory of physics that could deal with these shapes. And you might be thinking, uh, well, so, well, so what, right? Like like this thing, um, we can draw uh, this image in R three. Right, so um, who cares? Um, who cares about some some more abstract definition? Right, we we already know how to write down functions and derivatives and integrals in R three. 
um, in, in Rn, really. So, so why not just think about like doing um, the calculus of functions in R3 and just restricting to the domain of, of this uh, surface of the torus? Um, sure, we could do that, but here's, here's part of the issue. In, in physics in, in particular, well, and even in math, um, we are more interested in, in what are those properties that are intrinsic to uh, the torus itself, right? So what I mean by that is we don't want properties that depend on our choice of embedding. Because there's all sorts of ways, like, like what if I rotated this uh, 90 degrees this way or, or flipped it around or, or stretched it or bent it. Okay, stretching or bending may um, affect certain geometric properties. <clears throat> but the point is, um, we want to do things in a coordinate independent way, right? It's not really an intrinsic physical property of some system if it, if it depends on the way we're embedding it in Rn, right? So th that's sort of like, th that would mean that the physics depends on the way that like us humans decide to ascribe it coordinates. But that doesn't really make sense, right? We're, we're more interested in like the intrinsic properties of the world and the coordinate systems, like maps that we draw, these are our ways of representing it, but, but we want to find those, those sort of uh, properties underneath that, that um, are really inherent to these structures. So how are we going to uh, deal with all of this? Well, um, so, so we want some sort of coordinate independence. And one thing we can say to try and uh, work on these shapes more generally is that um, in calculus, we generally c care about things on very infinitesimal levels, right? So, so you know, if you, if, if you take some curved line um, just in, in regular one-dimensional calculus and you take the, uh, you know, the, the derivative gives you the slope at that tangent point, uh, tangent spot, you know, it doesn't really matter what's happening elsewhere on the curve, right? If we zoom in, the, the, the point of zooming in there is that it's, it's the place where um, it, it's, you almost can't distinguish between the straight line and the curve itself, right? So it's a very local thing. I mean, same when we're taking the integral and we're adding up all these uh, infinitesimal areas, right? It's, okay, Yes, um, if we're integrating over some region, there's there's larger sort of global uh, phenomenon going around, but we're just sort of adding up these little local pieces of information. So um, with that in mind, we only need, um, um, what, what we can do is sort of hijack the fact that we know how to do calculus um, in Rm, Rm to Rn, and calculus is a local property. So if we can find some sort of shape that locally looks like Rn, then we can carry out um, our calculus in those small regions and then just sort of patch things together. And that's exactly what the idea of a manifold is. <clears throat> so, so what do we mean by shape? Uh, well, well, the most sort of general uh, version of shape that us mathematicians have is that of a topological space. Um, so, so in particular, a manifold um, is, is going to be, uh, first and foremost, a topological space. Um, and I guess, I, you know, I was going to mention this afterwards, but, but um, I, I'm going to say two technical things, which they are important for the definition of a manifold. And, and so they are very important, but they're also sort of things that like you check once and then you maybe just uh, uh, forget about or, or, or take for granted. Um, um, so if you don't, if you're not familiar with these terms, don't worry too much about it. So it, it's, it's a topological space, um, which is second countable. Um, uh, so, so all that means is that there exists a uh, countable collection of open sets, um, U sub I, that uh, cover the manifold. Um, and it has to be Hausdorff. Um, so, so what that means is uh, basically if you have um, any two points in your manifold, um, you can find open sets in that manifold um, covering those two points, um, but, but which are, are um, uh, disjoint. Okay, um, but so the more important thing that's in line with the, the tuition I was just explaining is that um, for our definition of manifold, what we would like is um, things to locally look like Rn, right? So by that, I mean, uh, we want it to be the case 
um, that uh, for every point P in the manifold, um, rather, let me back up and, and let me say this slightly differently. So, so uh, let me first tell you what, what a chart is. This is going to be our, our, our definition of, of local, uh, looks lo locally Euclidean, we sometimes say. Um, so so a, a chart um, is a pair, it's, it, it's an open set U of the manifold and a map phi such that um, uh, phi is a map so, so again, U is an open set in the topology of the manifold M, and phi is a map uh, from U into Rn, uh, a, a continuous map in particular. And uh, uh, for this, uh, so, so that's what a chart is. And um, if I have two charts, so, so it, intuitively what this is saying is, is it's giving you coordinates on your manifold. Right, so so U is some some open set. So on some sort of patch of your manifold, you're ascribing some tuple of real numbers. And again, even in physics, this is sort of what we're doing, right? Uh, uh, some sort of patch of space. Um, we ascribe some numbers so that we can make some manipulations with it. And um, uh, we want this map to be uh, continuous. And we also want some sort of compatibility, right? Going back to this idea of our, our coordinate system, uh, our physics should be independent of this choice. So there should be a nice way to translate between coordinate systems. Well, what does nice mean for us um, in, in the world of calculus? Uh, it means uh, smooth. It means that we're working with smooth functions. So um, um, I'm, I'm further going to demand that suppose I had um, two of these uh, charts, right? So, so suppose I have some U um, intersect V. So, so this is living in, in my manifold M. And uh, these charts come with, with maps. So this will take uh, a phi, uh, will take, this goes from U into Rn. Um, and this goes, uh, I have another map, uh, psi, which goes from V into let's say RM, although um, it, it turns out that uh, at least for connected manifolds, um, the RN is gonna be the same and, and that's what we call the dimension of the manifold. Um, and, and so this gets mapped to some you know, open patch of RN, this gets mapped, mapped to some open uh, patch of, of RM. And uh, we say that these charts are compatible if, um, the composition of, of uh, phi and psi inverse, so uh, 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 and uh, psi and phi inverse are both smooth maps. Um, because these, these define maps from Rm to Rn, right? So if I, if I were to go along phi inverse, this takes me up to this uh, intersection of open set, and then I apply phi, that's a map uh, going this way. That's this, this first one. Um, and alternatively, this uh, second set of maps would be following phi inverse and then applying psi. So these actually give me maps between Rm and Rn. So our definition of compatibility is just that everything remains uh, smooth. So, so the coordinates can be very different. The numbers you can get out of doing calculus on these patches are very different. There should be a smooth way to translate between these different pictures. Um, so, so we say that two charts are, are compatible um, if, uh, and, and there's, one, there's one other condition, um, we, we furthermore want uh, both the images of this intersection under phi and psi uh, to be open in, in the respect of Rn and Rm. Okay. So um, putting this all, all together then, um, we say that we have um, an atlas for a manifold, um, uh, intentional terminology, because it's sort of like having a, a map for points on your manifold. So an atlas is going to be a, uh, for us, a countable um, collection uh, where, um, uh, for every point in their ma uh, your manifold, there exists 
some open set that contains that point. Um, and of course, uh, where this whole family is um, compatible. And we can sort of um, wrap up our whole definition of a manifold um, to say that a manifold is a topological space together with a choice of um, atlas such that um, uh, countably many of these um, cover the entire manifold. Um, and uh, such that any, uh, any pair of points in that countable uh, cover uh, can be separated by two of these open sets. So we're baking in the Hausdorff and second countable condition uh, into our choice of atlas. Um, and, uh, and then of course, having the compatibility uh, uh, condition on all the maps. So that is the formal definition of a manifold. Um, and this lets us recover. So, so you know, all of these sorts of, of shapes that, that we can draw in Rn, uh, you know, we could have a, a tori or a torus with uh, uh, two holes or uh, a sphere, or in some of my other videos, you know, I've, I've, I've talked about um, uh, projective space. So like n-dimensional projective space can, can now be realized as a manifold. Uh, are the whole theory of, of Lie groups, you know, G, L, N, R, S, L, N, R, S, O, N, R, all of these sorts of things can all be given manifold structure now. And we can do it in a way that we recover um, an independence of our, of our choice of coordinates. So, um, oh, one last thing. Um, uh, so what I've been telling you about today is, is uh, very particularly um, what are called smooth manifolds. Um, and that's what I'm going to focus on in the series. Um, so you should know that, that uh, uh, so here I'm demanding that every, you know, all the maps are smooth and everything because we want to do real number calculus. Uh, there's also topological manifolds where we just, uh, they're more general because we don't worry about, you know, differentiable things. It's just about continuity. Uh, there's also holomorphic manifolds, which are more restrictive because we wor worry about um, holomorphic functions and, and complex smoothness. Uh, but, but this is it for now for the very basic definition of a manifold. Uh, next time, we'll start talking about tangent spaces and tangent bundles. So please let me know if you have any uh, questions in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.